Join me as we interview some interesting people that have ran into some interesting unexplainable things. And let's hear their take on it. So I, I can say that I was an unbeliever in, in the sense that I, I, I will just uh, listen to stories sometimes. And, and uh, from my early age, when I was in the military, we, we, we did some campaigns, you know, in the jungles of Colombia. And, and uh, we would talk to local people and they would tell us stories about the little people. They would tell us stories about these creatures that will come sometimes uh, in the in the most inexplicable areas of places and towns and and they will scare people and they will actually be like mockers and make jokes on people and 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 people will be traumatized and because most people will refer to them as evil creatures like and and and, and the characteristics that they had for what I for you know in the early my best, my first experience in the jungle was when when people will call me and say, "No, no, no, we're not going to be able to go there because, you know, I had this experience," and they will explain to me what happened, and and I will uh, skeptically say, I mean, I'm I'm very skeptical, and I will I I, I was just kind of keep asking questions, but then it's not uh, until a member of my family experience a very dramatic uh, encounter with one of these creatures a few years ago and uh, and I had the opportunity to speak with with her and, and and members of the family and and they and they acknowledged that this could not be something that that was uh, something out of her imagination it was really something that that uh, that it was uh, empirically experienced because she said that she actually had to throw rocks and run and and do something that it was actually that that it was not a dream that it was actually that happened and and she explained specifically the area where where it happens and 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 when my 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 aunt described this creature uh, about 18 inches high I mean with 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 including his head and, 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 and about 18 inches high. Uh, his face, he has big nose, but, but, but he has this like a grotesque, uh, I would say like a, you call it like a... Like warts? Almost. Like warps, yes. Yes, grotesque warps in their face. So his face is kind of grotesque. He, he, uh, he does dresses... Like she said that she he he was dressed with the kind of a middle age clothing, but with colorful clothing, and and he's he's mocking all the time, mocking with a with a with a with a with this uh, kind of a a satirical laugh. So it's a mocker mm -hmm. with a satirical laugh. And, and also with the invitation, also an invitation to come and follow him or be with him, things. But, but with the reservation, which is very interesting because it's been the same description of the other people. They've seen it, they're afraid, they don't like him, but, but they, they have seen that he always invites. And there, there, there are some, some, some narrations of people that have followed these people and have lost, been lost in the jungle. Because they, they do have some power of hypnotism, to hypnotize the person. In the case of my aunt, she, she's a very powerful woman and she actually fought this creature, basically. She tried to get him away and she said, get away, he grabbed. She, this, this woman has, she has, she's a very strong, she, she's very athletic and she, she actually had confrontation with animals, dogs. She had confrontation with so she 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 actually felt compelled to fight this little creature and trying to get him away so she started throwing him in stones but but the 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 i guess the characteristics of his, of this being is that he's very mocking he's very burlesque he makes making fun always trying to entice the person in some sort of a, a 
And you were saying Raps like the, uh, he has a lot of agility, some... like he could dodge like the the stuff being thrown at him. He was quick. He a little clumsy too, because I mean he was a little clumsy, but but uh, but uh, for what I understand, he was able to avoid avoid the okay the so so the interesting part about this creature is that that uh, that he does have some reservations. In other words, he he. He doesn't approach the, the the people too closely, and he's one of the. He always keep a distance, and he always. He's kind of a deceiver. So, so he tries to entice people into some sort of a conversation or some sort of a communication or. or and and, and uh, in the case of my aunt, she was very scared when she, after the episode, she was. We almost have to take it to the to the clinic because she was very distressed. In so much shock and he was, she was in shock because yeah. it's is I mean I believe that anybody would be in shock <laughs> would see some sort of a creature like that. In. Yeah. yeah. But they they've been uh, they've been several cases in that area, and also in the jungle, close to the area where I have my. Yeah, so uh, so tell us more about that. Where are we going to one go go explore these these little people? Well, I have Amazon? two two guys that work with me there. One of the guys were taking me because I have a I have a piece of property right on the Amazon River, and I have like Peru is across the street from the river, basically across the river, and so I have a, I have one guy who will, will take me around. The, there's a there's a road behind my my property. But I would have to walk through through certain areas, and I ask him to walk with me behind the property, and not going through the river. And these guys say, "No, I will not walk with you through that area." And I say, "Why?" I mean, uh, I mean, and he said, "No, he will take me in the in the in the canoe. He will take me in, 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 through the river, but he will never go around it because because they there is two two creatures that are always there and they always they scare people there and he said that he had a, a confrontation with one of one of those creatures and he was uh, and this this was a serious guy it's a 30 maybe 38 year old man uh, I mean I, I I know I know him through I know I know him through a missionary a uh, woman that works in that area with some of the Tikuna Indians, some of the people there. So I know this is a serious man that he's not going to talk to me. Something that it actually took me by surprise. Because and he was because he was generally afraid to go through. He that was area. generally afraid, and because I knew this was a serious man for me to talk to me, something like that. I thought at one moment I thought he was pulling my leg, but then I realized that that he was serious. And this happened before I had a conver before the event with my with my aunt. Your aunt. So, so did he describe how the creatures look like? Were they like little he, people too? He described it the same way. For a small people, uh, always in the woods, uh, trying to kind of invite people into their sort of world, the, the areas, and, uh, and 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 the description is almost the same. The, the, the way they talk, the way they laugh. Their 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 voices are almost like a, uh, the the burlesque sat static way of, of 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 having that kind of a interaction with people. So almost like very inviting when they're very not inviting, mocking. Yes, yes, that's really cool. Yeah. Well, one day we'll go and uh, <laughs> see if we can <laughs> if we can go and. Uh, discover them and hopefully they're not too hostile well uh, I tell you what I I'm not looking forward to see this creature but it will be interesting to it'll be interesting to be in their territory at least and, yeah. and and maybe talk to some of the people that have actually encountered those we'll talk events. to them first and see like what they recommend yep if <laughs> absolutely we'll do that so so when I when I start putting all this fact together in a period of maybe 15 20 years i realized that these were not just myths they were actually true events so 
I did a few research, and uh, one of the experts in, 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 in this particular uh, phenomenon is uh, Stephen Quayle. And he, ha and he has a lot of uh, information in regards to these stories, and, and, uh, and he has gathered all throughout the, the, the world many, many of these uh, events. But my experience, because I, I did some other, other travelings, and I was in India with a group of doctors doing a, a mission. It was a medical mission, and uh, I would like to, I like to videotape some of these events, and I like to go to exotic places. So I went to some of the temples in some of the areas there. We had an area called. It was right in, in the middle of Rajasthanian the Rajasthanian uh, desert and uh, outside of uh, these, these cities there were temples that were in the high places and I remember that, that there was a lot of uh, stories that, that these, these, these people have these, uh, these myths uh, or these beliefs that these beliefs have been given from generation to generations and we have this, uh, they, they do it through, through what they call the poems or, or the Vedas. And then, uh, so I went to this temple and I found this, this shaman who was the guy who was taking care of this temple. And he, he started reciting some of these stories. And in these stories they talk about these, uh, these beings who came in, into this world. And, uh, and they, they mingle with with the uh, human and specifically with women and they basically created this what they call these goddess and and these Vedas, these poems will talk about these these gods that 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 populated this area in india and you got all different type of temples where these goddess were worshipped by those different tribals so when i went to one of those temples uh, i they actually showed me, you know, there was a temple of the monkey. And I think it was a Han Hanamumu, one of the one of the gods of those temples, and it was this temple was full of monkeys. But the 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 interesting part about that is that when the shaman will tell us these stories, they will the the people that are actually living that experience there, they you can you can actually have a a, a, an immediate interaction with these people and you can you see that they're living that experience in other words they know that for them it's real and one of the things that they used to tell me it was uh, in, in, in Hindi they will tell you Jindi uh, Raheto Fermilengi and they will tell you over and over again as you go through different places and I will talk to different people, young people, older people, and they will say Tofer Milengi. And I'll try to figure out what exactly they were telling me. And basically what would they say to me was that if they will if if we will survive, we will meet again. So they, it, there is this uh, spiritual connection between between what they call uh, this spiritual world when they leave and 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 the experience that we are actually uh, having at this particular moment for 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 these indians in particular areas they live in this existence in a very in a very uh, i would say uh, transcendental moment so they don't see life the way most people see it we are we more part of them this empirical type, pragmatic world they, they they came here and they live this world on this experience in a more transcendental way because they they actually have this uh, this uh, uh, insight maybe through so many years of generations and experiences so for me it was like a, an awakening an awakening to reality that we walking in in, like in different dimensions here in this in this world uh, we live in in these moments but but we actually live in among creatures that are kind of uh, from another I would say maybe dimension 
creatures that are coming in and out maybe through portals and maybe through through some sort of a a, a, a I would say a spiritual map but also has to have some sort of a physical transport transport so so because these mysteries including in the Amazon with for some people over there the transmutation or what we call uh, they, 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 they can transform, they, 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 they can shift their forms into animals. And you talk to the Tikunas and you talk to, to some of the Indians there, and some, of the, some of the tribal in the Amazon area between Brazil, Peru, and it is regarding what country you're talking with and, and what people you experience that conversation. They all tell you. They, they all, one way, somebody in their family or themselves have experienced seeing these transformations since these people doing this shifting shape shifting they they look human now but in in in, in a matter of a second they look like a panther or they look like a different animal in the jungle and uh, and 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 so so these this existence that we are here in this moment and we living in this time and space but there was that we are actually, we have neighbors, so we have some worlds that are connecting, and, 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 and for some reason in the last few years, we start seeing more and more and more of these events happening. And, um, and in, in Colombia, I, I just received a few notes that, that they have seen these strange creatures uh, having, uh, having to, I mean, these creatures that are almost like... Uh, winged winged uh, winged creatures that are half half bird and half man almost like almost like the mothman almost like mugman they have seen these creatures climbing and they have actually just some of these creatures climbing in some of these some some uh, churches and some places and and and, and there will be evidence you know that some of these there's a story that I read recently and I think it happened here in the States where a guy was chased by a creature that, that you described and he had to like shoot at it a bunch of times and barely survived. Like it attacked him in a cave when he got lost in, in the wilderness. I'll try to track it down. So I, I, I became a believer. I, I, I mean, for many years I was, I struggled with all these things. You believe, you, you, you think, you know, you see it in, in the magazines in the, you know, and inquired or some of those magazines in the in the stores, and you think, oh well, it's just uh, another just another made up story. Made up story. No. But then you realize that, you know, with my experience now, that I it's almost like I start putting together all my experiences that when I was traveling, some of the experiences that I have in in the Philippines or in Brazil or or, or even in, in in India, and I and uh, and conversations and 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 not just conversation but actually uh, in experiences that I was part of it because you know we uh, you know I I had that experience when I went to this uh, I was videotaping this this place where where it's supposed to be a place for cremation in India and I was I, w I was investigating a little bit about what 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 they believe and and I were more I was more interested in 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 their history of why they believe in, in what they believe in. Mm -hmm. They have this this uh, so many religions in India, and Hinduism is just thousands of way of seeing things and and, and perspectives. So, so many different perspectives. So so I I I just was kind of a curious so I went to this place where they do cremations but they do cremation for the lowest caste so I went to this place and I had a guy who was taking me in a motorcycle and he was actually my my translator so I went there with a video camera and he and we and and the guy said well we come down to see the guy who is in charge of the cremation the shaman the guy who in charge of the cremation so we went down like uh, two floors on this cementery area. So you're underground? So we were underground, on the ground of an area above 
the cemetery where they do the cremations. Uh, I don't know if they call it cemetery, but whatever it was, it was just the place where they take the death and people that nobody recognizes. Mm. So I went, we went down to this place and I was actually, I had my camera on and I was looking through the camera and trying to take some pictures. And all of a sudden there was this magnetic, whatever. Like a distortion, distortion in the camera. Distortion in the camera. And I couldn't do any more video. So I turned the camera off and I right, was in the press of this man. It was like a white headed big long beard, and he was the shaman in, in in charge of cremations in that area. But then when I saw him, he showed me this kind of a crypt where he has all these skulls, and he has some some of the fig, figures of the goddess that they worship. But as he explained to me, and and I have the translator explaining what he was saying. He said, this is the beginning of the underworld. And when he said that to me, there was something really, I felt this, something coming out of that hole. Because it was almost like a, like a gate. It was almost like a, like a cave like going a doorway. down. doorway. Yes. And, and I felt that, something coming out of that. And it was a, a, a presence that, I was among this presence. And, and, and I lost all my, I mean, I, I I had no power. On my 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 knees were shaking. I felt my 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 hair was uh, standing up, standing up, and I was in this uh, very very vulnerable. And I and I usually don't get in that more often because I I, I guess I I am very curious and I go to places so I don't have this fear. But I felt uh, something really uh, evil, dark coming out of that area and, and 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 then i realized that that they when they talk about this underworld when they talk about these caverns and 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 my experience in nagpur and some of the other places I, I i saw some of these caverns some of these places where where they always talk about these tunnels that keep going deeper and connects with other underworld areas and then I found out that there was the same tunnels where where in, in Colombia just in some areas of of uh, like in Tierra Dentro and in, and, I, and I and I also know about the uh, some of the some of the tunnels in Peru there's some in uh, Ecuador lava tunnels some of the la connect to Peru some of the ones in lava tunnel and some of these underworld tunnels that are actually like a like a different world and then and then when you read in some of the scriptures you you realize that they they talk about this place they talk about this place they call it Cheol they call it Hades and it's in the books explain this and you see some of the literatures like you know like like the divine comedy that explain very in detail how how this place looks like and, and, and there's information about this. So, and, 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 and there are creatures, or well, I don't know if it's a, in a spiritual world or, or, or some sort of a dimension, but uh, in the last years, it's becoming more, uh, I guess, there's more... Uh, more, uh, more regular? More regular. More reports? More reports. It's it's almost like a, it's almost like a, it's 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 becoming more evident, and uh, and and we 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 don't understand the reason, but uh, it, it might be that uh, that we get into a point where we're gonna have a discovery, and they know that whoever it is that the we're gonna have a discovery that uh, that there are certain creatures living among us and they've been there for a long time very long time, a long time. it'll be definitely an awakening once that, when that time comes it will be an awakening i think yeah. we are in the times that we're going to discover this yeah that'll be a, <laughs> scary and amazing all at the same time and i think i think everything is kind of orchestrated because i think uh, i think that the if you look at the direction where we're going with the artificial intelligence and 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 the way we and the way we progressing with this uh, all these distractions, but at the same time we have this physical, uh, I guess this physical world that is 
is is is kind of is kind of shifting. It's kind of this physical world's breaking down, and we're realizing it's less physical. And there's a lot more metaphysical aspects exactly. to it. This physical uh, world yeah. is that is is actually instead of is instead of becoming more evident that we that we didn't have this past. Now it's becoming more evident that we actually had this this past like that was real. Where science is starting to, like with the super string theory in physics, is starting to to support some of the uh, oral stories and, and uh, history that's been reported. Yeah, almost like... Of, a, of different oh, worlds. Exactly, so. exactly, yeah. yeah. This, uh, this is a good way to see it, but almost like mythology... Is 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 mythology is becoming become reality. is becoming reality, yeah. and whatever we thought it was a myth, it was it was actually a, a, a reality. So who lied to us? Who told us that this was mythology? Who decided to create this idea of all these false pretenses about life and what really happened, and why they lied to us? That's, if it was really true, questions. just like like simple ones like the city of Troy was thought just to be a myth until it was found following the story itself. Same with the cliff dwellings in Mesa Verde. That was thought to be crazy, but they just found it like a little bit over a hundred years ago. Yeah. And all of a sudden, all these things that were supposed to be myth, they're, they're truth. Uh, just like the giant squid. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Just like the giant squid. And now we, <laughs> it, 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 comes, it, comes like, it, it comes to the reality of the Bible because the Bible... If you really look back into the into what the Genesis was telling us, is they were telling us that, that there was this these beings that came and impregnated the daughters of men and they created these other races, the Nephilim. And all of a sudden, you know, we I mean I was a Catholic and, and Catholicism see all of that as actually part of mythology and it's interesting how in, in in Catholic schools, you actually study mythology, and mm. and and you learn about all these all these different myths, but not but but making sure that everybody understands that this is not real. Mm -hmm. But all of a sudden, that they're more like metaphors. Yes, they were not, metaphors, yeah. and, and 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 now we 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 come into this crossroads where we say, well. It looks like all these things that they told us it was just some Im imagination or somebody written or somebody created, made it up somehow. Made it yeah. up somehow. All of a sudden, it was actually truth. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah. So we go back to India and we 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 listen into the Vedas and to the poems that they're telling us about this goddess, the Ramanaya, the, the Ramana Mahabharata, 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 and and we we read all these stories and and all of a sudden they tell us about this uh, this uh, spacecraft or whatever they call the, it, the Viamas, Viamas, uh, or they also talk about the crafts with fire. And, uh, and all of a sudden now we have to really look at all these things and say, well, maybe all those things are true. Look at it under a different type of lens. Now we look at all, everything. Now we're going to be a skeptical. Instead of just of, writing it off. Instead of writing it off. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. That's wise. Yeah, I appreciate that. Yeah. So we, we very, we're very much living in very interesting times where, where I guess myth is meeting reality. Uh, you know, I, I agree. I agree. And I think time will tell us how close reality to myth is. But it is intriguing how there's a lot of things that now allow that mythology that was thought preposterous or impossible to exist or be real. Now we're learning that it could, that it's possible within our realm of understanding and knowledge. Absolutely, but the question that I have, and, and, and it's puzzled me because we're humans, and a human, as humans, we should love our race and we should love our, our existence, and so we, it's been a conspiracy, and who created this conspiracy, and why this conspiracy was created, and why they're polarizing us as a race and making us getting all these divert ideas, so we don't really focus on the reality, which is. Our human race is under fire. 
Well, I mean, that's that's an easy one for power and control. Who's ever pulling the strings? Uh, I mean, I don't know. Like, obviously, we see it happen all the time in, like, the political arenas. Uh, but, again, wh wh whoever, whatever it is, power and control, you know, conquer But may divide. maybe Orson Welles were right when he was saying, my mind's more superior than ours. We're observing our movements like microorganisms in a glass of water. Yeah. So that means there were minds more superior than ours and they were looking our movements and they were actually waiting and preparing their movements to attack. Mm -hmm. And the question is this, those humans who believe that they're going to attack us or the ones that believe that they're going to be befriend. Because, you know, this is the problem with a lot of, of the humanity here. It's like a lot of people believe that, that, that if there is another race, or if there is an or, or, or the other extraterrestrials, the most likely they are friendly. But if they will be friendly, who are those more superior minds that have been observing and manipulating our movements? So yeah. maybe Orson Welles knew something that we. Or you could see connections somewhere that weren't adding up. That yeah. that was the only conclusion to make. Yeah. Oh. But, but maybe we will have these water worlds and it will come soon too. Yeah, yeah, you know, time time will tell, right? Time will be the revealer of yeah. all things. But there will be a group of survivalists like like us that we believe that, that the primitive world maybe had a wisdom for it because at the end, you know, we, we will understand that there was a very limited time for us to experience mm -hmm this moment where we walk through this physical world yeah they had maybe they had knowledge and a, and a perspective that we're missing out and on and we're not listening to them because at least I, I was actually having conversation with a with an indigenous guy from from the area of minnesota and and he was saying to me we we have the answers i mean have they asked us he said to me have they asked us meaning their people, mm -hmm. their indigenous people, have they asked us about why there are a female and male tree right in front of them? They never know about them. They've been here for 300 years, and, and they haven't come to us. We, we've been here much longer. <laughs> and they haven't asked yeah. us why they are female and, and male. And, know, when, like, and, and when we give them a, a secret, he, he, meaning he said that, mm -hmm. and when we give them a secret about nature, they take all that secret and they go into the pharmaceutical, and they make a drug, and they will, ch and they want to charge everybody for this that is free. Mm -hmm. So, so it's very interesting how the wisdom is being there. And he was actually telling it. It was very interesting, man. How it's exploited. How how it's exploited by others. By others. And, and and he patiently knew that they were going to be moving into an area where they they they, they were going to be food racing in these waters and he showed me how the the wild rice can feed so many people and i can't show how it's so simple sometimes how nature provides but but uh, we uh he basically said it we he doesn't understand and he feels like you know there there, there there's been a manipulation of mm -hmm. and the way he views the world yeah. is much different than than the way the world is currently working. Yeah, and 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 it's and it comes to the same realization. We we are uh, we are living in a very uh, interesting times because because they pull it up, they're polarizing the human. Mm -hmm. We hum the humanity is being polarized and just stretched so hard, and uh, and and. And there's going to be just a few people, I believe, that, that, that will understand, actually, that would be manipulated. And only by, only by having that knowledge, knowing that, that, that you're being manipulated, that there are minds that are manipulating us, just by having that knowledge, allowing us to, to kind of plan for the future. Even if we don't make it, at least our kids, our, mm -hmm. our children, our friends will we'll have that knowledge that you know that there was there was this uh, 
Kind of like having the knowledge will liberate you. That will liberate us and we'll be a group of people that will survive because humans will survive. The thing about it is like we, they, they, they consider us like rats sometimes because we'll survive. But humans will survive because we are, we have something that other races won't have. Which you have in a spirit that is in us, that is at the image of, of, of that lightness that it comes in us. And, and awesome. that, that is what it make us, make us go beyond and above. And we will survive. Yes, we will be will be the stretch again, and but we will survive. Awesome! Thank you so much. Pretty incredible stories, right? I mean, I can't speak for them because I've never witnessed a lot of the the phenomena that we've spoken to with these eyewitnesses. But it does make you think and make you wonder what is out there, and the many interpretations of what it is and what this phenomena could be. Join me next time for another interview of The Unknown.